The ship is yours, sir. Thank you, sir. I accept command of the ship. I know all of you are as proud of her as I am. She's the latest in a long line of distinguished ships whose name she bears. She can be an efficient ship, a happy ship. She can maintain the great traditions of her predecessors if all of us will live up to those traditions. She'll be as brave as we are brave, as alert as we are alert. A single seaman on watch may at any time hold her very life in his hand. His alertness may prevent her destruction and win an engagement. So, she's yours, men, as much as she's mine. In a very real sense, the ship is ours. Mr. Grant, set the watch. Aye, Aye sir. Mr. Haynes, you will have the first watch as officer of the deck. Set the watch. First section. Aye, aye, sir. Boston mate. Set the watch. First section. Aye, aye, sir. So begins the life of a ship with the setting of the watch, the first official act performed by her captain. Set the watch. And her watch will stand continuously day and night, at sea or lying to, 365 days a year, until the ship is decommissioned or until she dies. Her watch will operate her, change her course and keep her on course, set her speed and stand guard over her to protect her from dangers within and without. When a ship is lying to, at anchor or tied up to a dock, her watch is concerned principally with sentry and standby duty. There are hundreds of different watches stood aboard ship, but they all may be classified into three groups. There are the watches which operate and control the ship, including the helmsman, the annunciator watch, the throttle watch, and all the members of the engine room watch. The second group has to do with communications. There is the radio watch, the signalman watch, for communication via signal and semaphore flags and blinkers. And the telephone watch, or talkers as they are called, for intercommunication between different parts of the ship. The third group consists of the radar watch, the sound gear watch for submarine detection, the sky, surface, and horizon lookout watches. These are the eyes and ears of the ship. The success of the fleet in battle may be determined by them. An engagement may be won or lost, depending on whether or not they see an enemy task force before it sees us. And equally important, on the watch depends the minute-to-minute -minute safety of the ship. But for the most part, standing watch aboard ship is a matter of keeping alert despite the long, dull hours of waiting. Knowing how to use your eyes against the blackness of the night or the glare of the sun on the water. Before a man stands watch at sea, he has had plenty of training and experience in watch standing, beginning back in his boot camp days, when he first entered the Navy as a recruit. Wonder what they're gonna feed us now. I don't know. Ben? You've already had a lecture on watch standing from your company commander. There are just a couple of things that I want to add. In no the Navy, what he says, I still won't like it. Ah, oh, pipe down. The highest admiral has stood watch thousands of times. From the time you first go aboard ship, you'll be standing watch. The boot watch helps you get in training for that. In training for what? Boot watch. What are you going to do, stand practice. there? Or walk Fire around a little? A constant That's no struggle. And there are hundreds of Axis agents who would relish the chance to blow up any barracks on the station. Another thing, in the Navy, it's the custom to relieve early. And be sure to keep an eye on the bulletin board in your barracks so that you'll know in advance when you're due to stand watch. Where the hell have you been? Ah, uh, what's ten minutes? Ten minutes is a long time, Elmer, old boy, as you will shortly discover, this being your first watch. Ready to relieve you. 
Elmer, you will remember, was the guy that felt watch standing was no struggle. All you gotta do is just stand there or walk around. But at the end of an hour, his feet are like lead, and he's about as alert as Lou Nova after a Joe Lewis punch. Why don't you sit down and rest for a few minutes? Then you'd feel better. Wouldn't be so hard to keep awake. Mm-hmm. Sit down and you'll go to sleep. Remember what the company commander said about that? Article 4, in the Articles for the Government of the United States Navy. The punishment of death, or such other punishment as a court-martial may adjudge, may be inflicted on any person in the naval service who sleeps upon his watch. Maybe that's the way they do it in the fleet. But you know that here, if you get caught sleeping, all you have to do is drill for a couple hours. If you don't want to sit down, why don't you go lean against that bulkhead over there? Close your eyes. Give them a rest. Relax for a minute. Feels good, don't it? Sure. So good that in a moment, our friend Elmer is feeling no pain. But here comes the petty officer of the guard. And it is doubtful if he will believe that Elmer is just resting his eyes. I'm told guard coming 116 reporting, sir. Carry on. Hey, you dope, wake up! Guard Company 116 reporting, sir. Carry on. My eyes, sir. That was a close one. What you need is a cigarette. That'll keep you awake. But you're not supposed to smoke on watch. You won't be able to smoke out there. On shipboard, the glow of a butt's a dead giveaway to the enemy. Hell, worry about that when you get out there. Why don't you go over and sit on that table? You can flick your ashes in the bucket. Come on, you're perfectly safe. Old Nosey isn't due back for 30 minutes. But the petty officer of the guard, being of a suspicious nature, decides another call on Elmer might not be amiss. Guard coming 116 reporting, sir. Carry on. In the feet, eh? You ain't just kidding. What'd they have you drilling for? Smoking on watch. Heller's only trying to stay awake. But you ain't the only one. It's a hell of a note. How do you expect to stay awake when they get you up so early? Besides, what good to do? They don't need that many guys to guard a barracks. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, sir, we were just... Uh... Yeah, I know. I heard you. Yes, sir, we were just... Sit down. And listen. So you think boot watch is tough, huh? Where do you get aboard ship and have to stand six or eight or maybe ten hours at a time? Or stand watch and watch? Four hours on and four hours off. That's what boot watch is for, partly. To toughen you up so you can take it. But, sir, how do you keep awake? Well, naturally, if you just stand there and think about how tired you are, you can't expect to keep awake. Five minutes seems like an hour. Move around, notice things. Even little unimportant things. If a guy rolls over in his sleep, notice that and see if he's in the same position when you come around again. Are the sea bags all secured right? Keep an eye on the thermometer and remember the temperature readings. Watch the weather. Notice if the windows are open enough for good ventilation, but not enough to let in the elements. 
And maybe that all sounds silly, but it's not. Noticing things like that makes the time pass quicker. It helps you to stay awake. And in the Navy, especially aboard ship, that habit of noticing things pays off. The next time you're on watch, try it out and see if it isn't easier to keep awake. But the next time he has the watch, Elmer has a better idea for keeping awake. He's all in a stupor over Superman. He's so busy watching Superman put out a fire that he hasn't time for the real thing. These funny books sure are good. You can practically smell the smoke of that fire Superman's working on. And meanwhile, the dormitory guard's no help. Barracks fires rarely get much of a start. Because of the number of men on guard in each barracks, plus the fire guards outside, someone almost always discovers the blaze early enough so it is easily put out. But when two men dope off at the same time, life and property may be in danger. Present and accounted for, sir. All through your life in the Navy, both ashore and afloat, you'll be depending on your shipmates, and they on you. Will you be the guard or the lookout who spots the danger in time? Bridge, periscope bearing 270, range 2000. Bridge, I, periscope bearing 270, range 2000. Left full rudder. Left full rudder, sir. Plunge the head full speed. Full head full speed, sir. Come to course 140. Course 140, sir. Sound the general alarm. All right. Torpedo bearing 340. Torpedo bearing 340, sir. Very well. Left standard rudder. Left standard rudder, sir. Come to course 120. Course 120, sir. Well done, Mr. Haynes. Stand by for depth charge attack. Aye, aye, sir. Will you be responsible for this? Left full rudder. Left full rudder. Left full rudder, sir. You only lost a couple of seconds. What difference can that make? A man may stand watch for weeks or months during which not a single emergency arises. Then he dopes off for just a few seconds. One minute, all is well. The next, his ship is sinking. Many of his shipmates are dead or dying, the rest floundering helplessly in the water. from among those who lie beneath the black waters, one could rise up again. He would tell you about watch standing. Yeah, I can tell you. Standing watch is a sacred duty. 
You dope off once, and you're hounded the rest of your life by the faces of your dying shipmates. For life, did I say? Forever. Ah, don't ever fool yourself. Your shipmates will know what kind of a watch you stand, just as you'll be able to tell about them. You know almost by just looking at a man on watch. Even back in boot camp, you could tell by the way he looks and acts, whether he's sloppy in daydreams or snappy and alert, a credit to himself and the Navy. You can tell by the way he sounds off. You can tell by the way he uses his eyes. Yeah, your shipmates will know about you. And at sea, as they lie in their sacks at night, knowing you're on watch, will they have a feeling of safety, knowing you won't dope off, that you'll see danger if it comes, that by your watchfulness they'll wake up alive? I say it again, standing watch is a sacred duty. Don't ever let your shipmates down, sailor. Don't ever let them down.